Okay, once again, and since I only add a little bit different concept from the concepts that it was taught in the previous instructional videos, so you need to watch that video uploaded on the module first. Okay, so um, the original function and inverse function, the relationship that we're studying today, we can look at it in two ways. First, so let's write the title here. When you see inverse functions of the original functions in the first way, and we can just see it with algebraic point of view. Then, simply, the relationship between original function, the given function, and its inverse function is nothing but we change, we switch x and y. By switching x and y, consequently, we have input of the original function making the inputs of original function into the... Um, So how can I say? So we just switch input and output, and then it's gonna make up the uh, inverse function relationship. So if we are changing X and Y, then consequently it changes the input values, input elements and output elements. It's totally opposite and happening in the inverse. And in that way, we can see graphically the domain of the function and range of the function will be switched to. So algebraic way of uh, looking at it, looking at them together is simply switch X and Y's. Then Switch also inputs and outputs. And then in another words, and then it's gonna switch domain and range. So literally, when you algebraically change the original given function into inverse function equation and those steps require you to literally change the variable x and y okay we'll see that in coming examples then another way of looking at it is graphical point of view As we already saw here, and by switching X and Y, it's going to change everything. So graphical result by switching domain and range, and it's going to end up being exact shape graph, but it was reflected over the diagonal line. It divides whole quadrant exactly in half pass through the origin. So graphical way of interpretation is those two graphs. One is original function graph and then the other one is its inverse function graph and they are symmetric over x equals y line. So if I make simple diagram, then let's say I have this x axis and oh, 
Let me extend a little bit. X axis and Y axis. Then original graph was, let's say, something like this. It's a weird graph, right? Then let's call it original function with function notation f of x, right? Then we know the graph of this f of x will be reflected over this purple line which is x equals y. x equals y line is nothing but when x is 1, y is 1, when x is negative 5 and y is negative 5. And then if you connect all the dots continuously and it's going to make this diagonal line divide the whole space exactly into two pieces, right? Then the inverse function of it will be this. So exactly the same shape. Maybe I have to little bit make it short. So now I have that mirror image over the diagonal line and then that's going to indicate the inverse function. And in this case, the notation for us to put with the inverse is f and this is not negative exponent this is just notation for the inverse we read it f inverse of x so now the green one is the inverse graph of the original function f of x and then we call it f inverse of x then if we use Instead of the function notation, we can indicate the output, which is the, the whole series of that output, the range, the graph. We can also call it with y. So either f inverse of y, or we can call it y inverse as well. Then the counterpart of this, will be just y for the original graph, okay? Then we call it, what again? It's f inverse of x. That's how we read the notation. Okay, any questions so far? Okay, so you, we can call it f inverse of x or inverse of f of x, either way, okay? <coughs> then, one more concept that we have to see is, now we know there's going to be graph-wise, it's reflected over x equals y. And you can check the coordinates, literally change the switch, like switch the position, x coordinates all become y coordinate and y coordinates all become x coordinate between the original function graph and the inverse function, right? So then you can see this interesting result that I want to mention here. If the original function is not on one to one function, what's one to one function? 
one-to-one -one function is every single input has exactly one output only. So, for example, if we have parabola, so let's grab it quickly. So let's say this is the parabola that we have here, right? Then this is not a one-to-one -one function. How do we know? Because this is the same output here with one input and the other input. So two input, x sub one and x sub two has exactly same output value here, right? So then this is not a one-to-one -one function. Then since we know its inverse graph will be reflected over x equals y line, then simply its inverse function graph which would look like this is is not a function why is not a function because it doesn't pass the vertical test, vertical line test. So it's not a function. So we can only call it a relation. So this is f of x, the f inverse of x, and then this is original one. So this is f. Then what happens if the original function is one-to-one? -one? So what can be the one-to-one -one function graph? Let's go with the uh, cubic function. So the original one will be, so this is f of x, is x cubed, then the inverse function, which is f inverse of x and cube root of x is this. As you see, this is exactly reflected over the diagonal line, right? So then this is original one and then this is inverse function. And now this is one to one because here x1 has this y1 and then x2 has this y2. This is one to one. Then once I get to the inverse, f inverse of x, and this one definitely passes the vertical line test only once. So knowing this, when we get to figure out original function and inverse function, when it comes with the original function being not a one-to-one -one function, and you have to be really careful how to exactly just designate the inverse function graph, okay? Okay, anything that you want to discuss before we move on? Okay. Then let's do examples. 
I hope you guys can see the examples and we'll have the better understanding. Then example number one. Then let's say you are given with f of x with the equation x squared minus 5. Then it says find f inverse of x. In other words, you have to find the inverse function of the f in equation wise. So let's do algebraic way of steps first. So first step, step one. Um, just in case if you are given with the original function equation with the function notation f of x or g of x and something like that, then just for your algebraic convenience, it, I recommend you guys to rewrite them into y. So let's see. Rewrite it with y equals x squared minus 5 first. Because it will give you the last confusion when you deal with those variables is actually y and x and then we switch it, right? So then first I rewrite the function notation into literally y. Then step two, we have to switch what and what? We have to switch x and y. So let's see what happens. Now y becomes x, x becomes y, so it has to be squared, and then it was copied down. Then, once you switch x and y, now we have to solve this new switched equation for the variable y. As we see, the inverse function itself, right? So then, first I have to do so step three will be we simplify and then rewrite, reorganize the given equation by switching x and y, and then we solve it for y. We solve it for y. So then first I recognize negative five from the right side should be transposed to the left side. So it's gonna be x plus five, and then the other side is y squared. Then in order to solve, merely only the y by itself, I have to do square root both sides, right? Square root both sides. Then square root both sides. Then remember, when you square root both sides, this is not only just the square root of the side, it has to be plus minus square root of the radicand and then the other side can be just y. So now we will see what happens in graph on the quadrant. So now remember we have this and then another thing. Then once you came up with this equation and you have to put this notation on top so that we know this is not the exactly the same equation that we start with. Now this is definitely the inverse. Okay. Then Let's start graphing the inverse function. Then what kind of function graph of the inverse function would take? It's a square root function. And inside of the square root, we have x plus 5. So the plus 5 is vertical shift, vertical shift. So it was supposed to move the square root function to the left by 5 units. So now we see 
this is negative 5. I have this square root graph right here. So that's going to be y inverse positive x plus 5 here. Then, then, negative is reflection over the x. Now, I have this part. It's also y inverse, negative square root of x plus 5. That's how we have plus minus of that square root of x plus 5. But then we will graph the original function all together in the same quadrant so that we can verify if they are symmetric over x equals y too. So let me choose different color. So let's see, then it's x squared minus 5 was the original one. That was parabola. The vertex was slight down by 5, so it's going to be around here. And then this is f of x, which is x squared minus 5 then they are reflected over x equals y, which is, I can just see it here. So they are reflected over x equals y. So now it explains how we can have positive part of square root graph and negative part under that x-axis of square root of graph. But if we take both, and we should know, they're not actually a function though, because it would not pass the vertical line test at all. But the behind story of that conversion between original one and the inverse function is this, okay? Then let's have one more example that goes opposite direction. If we are given with square root function as original function and its inverse will be quadratic function. And in that case, we will see a little bit different of situation going on and then it will give you more clear points there, okay? So let's say example number two, given g of x is one of, let's see, square root function. And let's go with this, square root of 2x minus 3. Then we find g inverse of x. So simply we're finding the equation and the graph of the inverse function of the given square root function, okay? So let's do algebraic step by step. So step one, I will rewrite function notation g of x into what letter? y, okay, then y is square root of 2x minus 3. Then, step 2, we switch what and what? x and y. So now, y becomes x, square root is square root, 2, instead of x, 2y minus 3. Then I have to solve for y. y is inside of the square root, so I have to take it out. And the way that I take it out is, I have to 
square both sides. So now we are manipulating this switched x and y switched equation. So then the other side, um, the next step, it's going to be x squared, and then 2y minus 3 comes out. So then, now I have to solve this equation for y. So y is here. Then I have to transpose 3 and then divide everything by 2. So plus 3 plus 3 will be x squared plus 3. And then it's 2y. And then divide everything by 2 will get us y only and then it's x squared plus 3 over 2. But here, the most important thing that we have to put down here is step 3. So I have to notate this one with what? Inverse. Inverse. You forget this, and then this one doesn't make sense mathematically at all. So now we have this. But let's take a look, get a little bit closer here. So this is just simply one half x squared and plus three half. So this is parabola with one half dilation so it's going to be a little, little bit wider print uh, a per, uh, per parabola and then the vertex is raised up by 1.5 3 divided by 2 is 1.5 right so then this is the inverse graph so let's graph it Let's graph it, okay? Let's graph it. And here, if I graph it, so this is x-axis, and then this is y, right? Okay, then this is a problem. The vertex is 1.5. So let's say this is the graph, right? And then where's the vertex? Then this is g inverse of x, right? Then, if you go from the inverse graph back to the original function, it also needs to be symmetric over x equals y line, right? So then, where is x equals y line? Here. This is x equals y line. Then, if I graph the original g of x, the original g of x is square root of 2x minus 3. So if I solve the radicand the inside and 2x minus 3 equals 0, and then I solve it, it's x equals positive 1.5. So the starting point is positive 1.5, and then it's positive square root. So this is the original g of x here. Then c. Then if we were going from the original graph g of x, and then I reflect it over that x equals y line, then somehow the reflection has an extra part. Where do you see the extra part? <gasps> T 
This is not gonna work. Okay, let me re graph it. Okay. So this is original drawing right here. Then here, since the only the green, which is the original G of X was sideways problem, but it was just only the the positive side and then if I just reflect it and then actually I'm not supposed to have this negative part so now it's correct you see that so in order to make this mathematically and graphically correct we cannot include the negative part here because this one has to be gone. This one has to be invisible. So this is not there. So it's not included. Then what we can do is restrict the domain of G of X by putting this x greater than equal to zero so then then with this blue one we're not taking whole parabola we're only so this is not right and then we're taking only this part this is correct and by putting the restricted domain with this, only we take the mathematically appropriate part of the problem. So restricted domain of that vertex. Or did I say like restrict domain of the original function? But yeah, restrict domain of the in inverse function there, right? The blue one was the inverse. So that's what happens when we go from either parabola to square root and or square root to parabola and it causes some problem, whether it's vert, vert, uh, inverse function is um, one to one. I mean, the original function is one to one so that the inverse function is still a function or not. Okay, this might be a little bit too much to observe and digest right away. So this afternoon, I will make this edited recorded video and then I will upload on that page that I showed you earlier. So I hope you guys can utilize. All right. Any questions?